The first one is the intellectual faith. Okay, and also commonly referred as to natural faith. This type of faith that both Christians and unbelievers, okay, remember, this is not only for believers, but this is also for non-believers, and then they can have it. It is defined as believing something to be true without proof or commitment. Okay, so to give you an example, a person can intellectually believe Jesus was a real person who walked on earth and helped others and performed miracles, but not to the point that they accept the fact that he was the God man. In short, they are only taking it intellectually. Okay? So that is intellectual faith. They believe. They, 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 they know, you know, they accept the fact. So basically. So the second one is saving faith. It is defined as trusting in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Every Christian who quote-unquote call themselves Christians should have under God or taken, or taken saving faith. You know, it is defined as trusting in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as one who provides us with the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of everlasting life. This type of faith involves having a personal relationship with the Lord, renouncing sin and turning our lives over to Him. Lahat naman tayo, ginawa na yun. Taas ang kamay ang hindi pa ginagawa yung ina-accept yung saving faith. Okay, so ibig sabihin, lahat tayo nag-accept na, we all accept the Lord Jesus Christ through faith, through that saving faith. Okay, so... That's the second one. And there's the third one, according to Charles Stanley. And this is the, uh, what we call the Godly faith. This is the confident conviction that whatever the Lord has promised to do, He will absolutely fulfill it. He has never failed to keep His word, and that will never change. So remember, saving faith is just you know, the initial event. After saving faith, then whatever comes next, it should be practiced as godly faith. Okay? So, the one-time event is the saving faith, and, and the succeeding event will be the godly faith. And today, we are going to focus more on those two, the saving faith and godly faith. Because intellectual faith, it doesn't have any value for us. Because that is for both believers and unbelievers, right? It is just only intellectual. Let me, uh, let me go now to my second point. That is faith classified. Classify lang natin yung three types of faith. So let, let's go to the second point. Let's try to define what is faith. You know, to get a, a deeper definition or the biblical definition pertaining to the saving and godly faith. And we, we will focus only on, chap on, on, on chapter 11 verse 1. And sabi doon, what does it says? Now, faith is the substance, in, in other version, it says the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence or convictions of things not seen. So what is faith? And sabi dyan, the faith then must have a substance, right? And sabi doon, now faith is a substance, okay? Diyan lang muna, diyan lang muna, okay? Faith then must have a substance. Must have some stuff that we could rely on. Ibig sabihin, yun, yun yung definition dyan eh. The faith, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It means that faith is only as meaningful as to the substance to which it is attached. Okay? Let me explain further. If we have faith on bad substance, then our faith will be insufficient no matter how much faith we have. You know, um, because the substance we're placing in, it isn't much or maybe not real at all. Okay, so let me repeat that. If we have faith on bad substance, then our faith will be insufficient no matter how much faith we possess, because the substance we're placing it, it isn't much or maybe 
not real at all. So kung ang, ang faith mo, you will put your faith on something that is not significant, then there's no point. Okay? Faith has to do with an expectation in a hope that it must involve a substance. Yun ang sabi doon, di ba? So the amount of faith is not tied up to how much faith we have. Okay? It is tied up to how much substance we possess. Okay? I will explain that further. A little faith in significant substance produces great result. A lot of faith in insufficient substance will produce no result at all. You know, Matthew 17, 20. Ano sabi sa Matthew chapter 17, 20? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have a faith as, as a grain of a mustard seed, you know how small is a mustard seed? You know, well, ma mali, sa hole yun. It's, it's even small than a marble, right? It says there, if you have as a, as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto the mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Okay, so what, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that a little faith and insignificant substance produce great result. Miski maliit lang yung faith natin, pero yung substance natin eh, is great, and it can produce great result. But if we have so much faith, Okay, and so on, on insignificant substance, it's still not gonna work out, diba? Because what makes faith faith is to which the substance which is its attached. Okay, English ko parang Let me repeat. Because what makes faith faith is to which the substance is which is it attached. Kung saan siya nakatouch, yun, kung baga sana, yung weight ng faith it's not about the faith in itself, but on the substance where it is attached or where it is connected. Okay? So to understand faith, we need to look into the substance of the things hoped for. That is what the object is. Okay? So the faith uh, is, is not as equivalent to the object, right? And to clarify more, Let's look at what faith is not, because this is what faith is, and let's look what faith is not. Faith is not how we feel. It is not necessarily how we feel. We can feel faith less, but be full of faith. We can feel full of faith and have no faith at all. Can you repeat that, Father? Then, okay, let me repeat it. We can feel faith less but be full of faith. We can feel full of faith and have no faith. Because, what makes, what makes I said that? Because faith is not an emotion. Emotions do not have intellect. Emotions don't think. It is how we feel. And that is what emotion is, right? Feeling shift based on information received while faith is tied up to the substance that is not yet seen or experienced, but convinced of real base on the integrity of the subject who is calling for the faith. And who is the subject calling for the faith? It is God. You know, ano sabi doon? Sa, sa verse, uh, sa binasa natin kanina, on verse 35, chapter 10, verse 35, ano sabi doon? When you have done the will of God. Okay? So it is God who is the subject of our faith. He's the one calling it, right? So it is not our feeling. And this is important that we understand that the Hebrew states that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, uh, verse 6. Ano sabi? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Again, this is important. Faith is not one of the things that we need. Let me repeat that. Faith is not one of the things that we need. It is the key thing we need. If we want to experience God, then we need to have faith. Because without it, we cannot please God. 
and without it, we are displeasing God. Ibig sabihin, pagka wala kang faith, then you are displeasing God. That's how simple it is, right? Because when we do not exercise faith, we are challenging God's integrity. Meaning, to not live by faith is calling God a liar. Right? You know, faith is acting like God is telling the truth. Faith is not feeling that God is acting the truth or it is not saying that God is acting the truth. It is not saying or it's not feeling, but it is acting that God is telling the truth. That is why the Bible says, walking by faith. The Bible doesn't say, you know, you talk by faith, or you feel by faith, or you even think by faith. Ang sabi ng Bible, walk by faith. It's an act. It's an action. Unless it hit our feet, it is not faith. Unless it's, it moves us, it is not faith. If we want concrete manifestation of God, then what we believe about God must be married to what we do in the light of that belief. Ibig sabihin, uh, if we want to see God work in our life, then we have to, you know, to, uh, to marry what we believe to what we do. Ibig sabihin, hindi nang pwede puro salita. Puro dakdak. Kailangan nakikita sa gawa natin. It needs to be seen in, in what we do. You know, uh, sa bako, that is exercise faith. You know, God can become concrete in our life and not just a theory in our head. Okay? God is real. God has power. God has promise. But we won't see it until God see action in our life. Okay? He, he has promised so many things. The question is, do we see those things happening? Probably not because we're not moving or living by faith. Faith is acting like so, even if, even if it's not even so, in order that it might be so, simply because God says so. Let me repeat. Faith is acting like it's so, even if it, even it is not even so, in order that it might be so, simply because God says so. Ibig sabihin, yung faith natin, kailangan natin na gawin, miski parang hindi. Di ba? Para makita natin yung mga dapat kasi sinabi ng Panginoon. Okay? So what can we learn? Okay, so we learn that faith is based on the substance and it is not just a feeling. You know, it is not how much faith, but how much substance we have. How much access we have on the substance. It is not an emotion, it is the key. And it, if without it, we are displeasing God. Faith is an act. Okay, so let me go now to my third point. Faith exemplified. Okay. Verse 2. Ano sabi sa verse 2? Ayan. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Okay? So what does it mean? Yung elders yan, the elders being mentioned here, were the people or the men of old. The men of the Old Testament. Okay? And so basically, the Hebrew writer is saying, because of faith, the old people or the people of the Old Testament they were approved. They were, uh, they have good report. Nakakuha sila ng rate, good rate or good report. So because of faith. Okay? So he makes a statement about faith in verse 1. So nagbigay siya ng statement of verse, in verse 1. Sabi niya, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then on verse 2, he reaches out from the Old Testament and put out witnesses so they would let, you know, so they would let the New Testament people that whatever happens to them in the past, which get approved, can also happen to them on the current. Ibig sabihin, kung yung faith nila on, on the Old Testament na work out for them, it will also work out for you in the New Testament. And that's the reason why he put out some witnesses. He got some witnesses. 
They all